have asked me, you know, when did you plan to do that? It's a plan. The guy hadn't scored in 18 games. How did I know he was going to score? <laughs> Constants in the history of the Buffalo Sabres. The city of Buffalo and Rick Jenneret. Since 1971, Rick's unmistakable voice has served as the backdrop for the greatest moments in Buffalo Sabres history. Tonight, he gets his moment. Here to celebrate RJ, we have Owners Terry and Kim Pagula, along with Sabres GM Kevin Adams. Rick's broadcast partners who were witness to history, including the family of the late Ted Darling. Players lucky enough to have had their names accentuated by Rick's iconic voice. And all of you, the fans, we are all here because of this true one of a kind, Mr. Rick Jenneret. I'm supposed to say something about Rick, but I think the crowd just said it all.
Rick, in 1971, you started your long journey with the Buffalo Sabres organization. I was a sophomore in college in 1971. I remember sitting on an overpass north of Pittsburgh, listening to your voice on the radio. Uh, I can tell you this, Rick. You are a big part of why I have become a Buffalo Sabres fan, and I will remember that for a long time. I used to sit up there. So thank you, Rick. I'm going to cut my talk short because the ovation was so great. And keep loving them. For most sports fans, it's what they've seen that stays with them. The replay in their minds. But not in Buffalo. In this town, the triumphant moments, the unforgettable excitement, the did that really just happen ecstasy? It's all tied to what we heard. Hockey in Buffalo became art on a spoken canvas. Pretty sweet moment to, to be a part of. When I hear his call, I still get chills. You reaffirmed our faith and turned a simple rhyme into a Christian. I'm identified by that one moment. The day I die, they're going to play the Rick Jenneret's voice and call, and everybody will smile and they'll toast Rick Jenneret because it's unbelievable. No, there's no one else who could have told our story quite like you. Rick would genuinely get excited and his face would get red and you could just hear the anticipation building he could ramp up into a fever and all of a sudden the call comes it's exciting it's addictive he made a game so exciting that you couldn't turn it off he has the ability to take the magnificent and turn it timeless every fan every player in the arena knows the moment isn't complete until they discover your call you listen to his call, and the excitement's always there. It's the passion, the spontaneity, the joy, the goosebumps, the humor, and the countless YouTube searches. There's the top 10 RJ calls, and I made it onto a couple of them. I remember sending it to all my friends. Just the way he calls it, it's going to be a memory in their mind forever. You know, those are the best times of, of my life. But really, it's the man. The beating heart of Sabres hockey. The minute that headset goes on, he's there. He sounds like he's 30 years old again. It's always the same. A big smiling face staring at you. They broke the mold, man. He's the guy. RJ is, to the truest sense of the word, one of a kind. He is every bit the Sabre of all time. And he said, this building is bedlam. And he was the happiest ever. He feels like it's home. Your name will hang in the rafters. Top shelf! Of course. But your voice will echo forever. And now, as RJ has done so many times, we welcome in former Sabre and his 15-year broadcast partner, Rob Ray. RJ has been great for Sabres hockey. His calls are legendary. As his TV partner, he took me under his wing and showed me the ropes of broadcasting. Then after countless nights on the road, at dive bars, bowling alleys, racetracks, we became good friends. RJ, thank you for your friendship, your mentorship, and for making the plays that we made on the ice live forever through your one-of-a-kind calls. I speak for all Buffalo Sabres alumni when I say, you deserve to be in the rafters as much as anyone who ever wore the uniform. You are one of us. You are the Buffalo Sabres. Now let's see the banner. 
This is the only job I ever wanted. And this is the only place I ever wanted to be. I stood down here 10 years ago upon my induction into the Sabres Hall of Fame along with the late Dale Howarchuk and I remember saying that night this is the only job I ever wanted this is the only place I ever wanted to be. I meant every word. I meant every word on that particular night. And boy, do I mean it now. I, I have so many to thank that I'll pare the list down because we'd be here another 51 years if I went through them all. My wife, Sandra, a.k.a. Cupcake, right at the top. Not only for putting up with me, but also for steering me through some of rather tough medical hurdles over the last decade, and also aided and abetted by a great medical team led by Dr. Tom Laurie at ECMC. Also, my kids, Chris, Mark, and Shelley, and all the grand brats they begat. <laughs> Although I guess I've got to stop calling them that now. They're getting too darn big. To my broadcast partners of today and yesterday, they're all out here. And may I also mention, please, the late Ted Darling and the late Pat Hannigan. To the guys and gals who are in the TV truck and behind the cameras and working all around the arena on every night that I should work, and they're challenged with the task of trying to make, you know, look beautiful. Good luck, guys. Good luck to you. And to Rob Ray, who can, well, you know, we've had some good times. We really have. Uh, we've had some fun times, you know, tossing it all back and forth. But now I find out he can't wait for me to get out the door because he wants my parking spot. <laughs> and tonight he can't talk back. Yes! To the 547 players who have worn the Sabres jersey and to the enemy who have not, shortly after I started this gig, about a half a century ago, Neil Diamond wrote and recorded a song called Beautiful Noise. In it, he reminisces about everyday sounds from the streets. He called that beautiful noise. My beautiful noise is a little different. Mine is the roar of the crowd. The roar of the crowd 
from you and your moms and dads and your grandmas and grandpas and even some great grandmas and great grandparents. I've met many of you, many. The noise you and all the others have created is like my lullaby. I find it very soothing. And so how do I acknowledge the hundreds of thousands of people who have gone through the doors at the Odd and here at Key Bank Center? How do I acknowledge that now it must be millions listening and watching over the last 51 years? Well, I'll tell you how much I appreciate your beautiful noise. I would say this to you. I have only three words, just three. I love you. Thank you all. Our celebration of Rick Jenneret continues throughout this night and, of course, forever.